Until recently, Peter Tulip was a senior economist at the Reserve Bank. He quit. I don't think the bank made decisions very well. It was, there was a lack of deliberation, a lack of consultation, and a lack of respect for evidence and research. The government has big questions too. A review into the Reserve Bank will cover everything from its purpose to who sits on the board. I don't want to be it to be exclusively focused on a backward-looking, blame-shifting exercise. I want it to genuinely be about how do we have the world's best central bank into the future. I view this as a, as a health check. We've been through a, a very difficult period. There have been high-profile missteps along the way. Up until late last year, the RBA said interest rates would stay at pandemic emergency lows until 2024. I still struggle with the scenario in which rates need to be raised next year. But the bank switched track and began to raise interest rates, putting homeowners under increasing pressure. We're going through a process now of steadily increasing interest rates and uh, there's more of that to come. Then there's inflation. The RBA's aim is to keep annual inflation between 2 and 3%. It's official. The cost of living is rising faster than it has for more than two decades. Inflation is now above 5%. And today, Governor Lowe conceded that when the bank slashed rates to emergency levels for a year and a half, that stoked the current price spirals. We need to ensure that the public continues to have high levels of confidence in the RBA to do their job, particularly around inflationary expectations. The Reserve Bank has one big lever it can pull, interest rates. But lowering them since the global financial crisis and using that blunt tool to hammer our economic problems has led to a decade of spiralling house prices and stagnant wage growth. Issues that have a huge impact on the lives of Australians. I was unhappy with the way the Reserve Bank made decisions. A lot of people like myself go into the Reserve Bank trying to make the economy a better place. I wasn't satisfied that the bank was really trying to do that. The three-person panel set to deliver their report by March next year. The Reserve Bank, like all central banks around the globe, is trying to put a lid on surging inflation without crashing the economy. But in spite of the challenges the RBA faces, Dr Isaac Gross from Monash University says the review is necessary. I think the Reserve Bank of Australia has generally done a, a pretty good job steering the Australian economy over the past two decades. Uh, but any organisation, regardless of how successful they are uh, or aren't, deserves to look at its institutional structure, see if it's got a good decision-making framework uh, in order to make sure that it's keeping up with the times. On to the review and the Treasurer says... This is not some exercise in second-guessing the RBA. It's not about pointing the finger or taking pot shots at the governor or his board. Then why? What's it about? Well, I think maybe uh, Jim Chalmers is being a little bit polite. Uh, I think part of the reason why we're having this review is due to the undershooting of inflation that occurred prior to the pandemic. Uh, and perhaps the overshooting today has also spurred uh, the government to launch this review. Um, but I think it's the comparisons with other central banks around the world that really uh, give rise to the, the need to change. And in terms of the overshooting, there has been quite a bit of criticism about the RBA being late to the party to tackle inflation. How much blame would you uh, put on the RBA for doing that? And what external factors are there? Perhaps the fact that we get quarterly CPI. I think that we uh, risk uh, being a bit too harsh on the RBA for this uh, one-off overshoot of inflation. Hopefully they can get it back under control uh, reasonably soon. It's certainly true that having quarterly inflation numbers uh, makes the job of targeting inflation much harder in Australia. And should they have an inflation target at all? I'm of the view that the inflation target has served Australia relatively well. It's a question that the Reserve Bank of Australia and the government of the day should ask themselves from time to time whether the inflation target is still fit for purpose. So maybe every five years or so they could you know, re-examine the target, see if it needs to be tweaked. When it comes to communication, Philip Lowe has come under heavy criticism for saying that interest rates won't rise until 2024, albeit with some nuance that perhaps got lost in the media communication. 
How much blame do you think he has to take on for all of the people who entered the housing market at the top just a year or two ago? I think if the Reserve Bank could do it again, they'd do it slightly differently. But at the end of the day, uh, projecting forward that interest rates would remain low was crucial to supporting economic growth. Part of the effect of that forward guidance that Phil Lowe provided was to rapidly bring down the fixed interest rate that most households um, have access to when they're choosing what mortgage to select. Now, if you were able to fix your mortgage uh, at any time in 2021, you probably got a great deal and you're probably still paying a very low interest rate. And that's because of that forward guidance that our Reserve Bank of Australia provided. On the structure of the board, uh, it's primarily comprised of business people with little monetary policy experience and very few people from more diverse backgrounds, even as has been argued the need for someone from the unions. Uh, what's your view on that? If we want a Reserve Bank of Australia that's actively examining its decisions and making sure that it's robust to uncertainty uh, and all the potential shocks that an economy might throw up, we need a board that is staffed with experts who know the ins and outs of monetary policy and, and, are, and are able to hold the staff to account. Zach Gross, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks for having me.